So let me introduce myself. I am Calvin. That's me. Um, maybe this one's better. I'm 28. Um, I come originally from Hong Kong. Uh, I moved to Canada when I was six uh, to Canada, and uh, I've been living in London for the past five years. And you know, out of all the things you remember, it's always those traumatic moments in life. And I still remember when I was six years old. I moved to Toronto and I had to go to school, but I started crying because I couldn't speak any English. So that's always ingrained in my head. And of course, I would start crying again if Martha told me yesterday that, oh, uh, did you know this was in Portuguese and you have to speak in Portuguese? So <laughs> hopefully, uh, you know, it's not going like that. Um, it's, it's a funny thing because I used to only know Chinese and now I know English. And the only time I get to use my Chinese is in a Chinese restaurant. And, uh, and then people was like, wow, you know Chinese? It's like, yes, I'm Chinese, that's why. It's like, oh, I'm very impressed. It's like, no, I just ordered some chicken and some rice. It's not a big deal. Um, but don't worry, I'm not going to bore you about my kind of, you know, tales of growing up and things like that. It's um, pretty boring. It's all the same stuff, I, you know, for me growing up as a Chinese Canadian, I always had these uh, identity issues. And my Chinese? Because, you know, Chinese has a very rich heritage, but also moving to Canada. Am I Canadian? Do I like hockey? Do I like maple syrup? Do I like snow? Do I like skiing? Do I like skating? And um, also, but also my Chinese side as well. And of course, another traumatic moment in my life was um, in grade nine. So grade nine, I was probably about 15, 16, something like that. And uh, it was in math class. So I don't know how many people like math over here, but uh, I talked to some people that liked it. And, uh, talking about math, and um, my teacher pulled me aside during, right before the Christmas break, and he said, Calvin, uh, I recommend you stop going to advanced math and go to normal math, because you're not really that good at math. And then, it was a huge disappointment, not to me, because to my parents, like, Chinese person that's not good at math. Oh, that was the end of the world. But it was very good for me, because like, oh yes, I'm Canadian, not Chinese. <laughs> Uh, so, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some social issues and what young people um, in the UK, but also in other parts of the world, what they're doing to solve some of the social issues. So let's just get some ideas out there. Um, who has something that they're mad about or pissed off about? Um, any young people see what's, what's going on in Portugal that you want to talk about? The environment, maybe something? Anybody else? You can throw me up something up. Prices? What else? Unemployment. 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 Anybody else? Social issues? That's it? Just unemployment and the prices? <laughs> Anything else? No? I'm sure they are, but you're just too shy, so <laughs> it's fine. So what's your problem? Um, and for me, when I started um, an organization called Food Cycle, I took three problems that I was very mad about. One was food waste. And the world today, there's a lot of food, good food being wasted. So in London, in the UK, a lot of good food, bananas and things being thrown up because nobody will buy them because they're a little bit bruised or a little bit too ripe or because nobody will buy them. Um, and then but there's also a thing called food poverty, which is people are not having enough good things to eat. So they might have, they're not hungry, they're eating a lot of french fries, uh, chips and fried food, but they're not getting enough apples and oranges and you know, vegetables and fruit. And at the same time, there's a lot of people growing up that skills, such as cooking, a lot of young people not knowing how to cook. So for me, I just combined all those things, all those issues, and it's funny how it works is that with Food Cycle, when you combine three problems, you actually get a solution. So what do we do? We, as Food Cycle, we combine surplus food, volunteers, and a free kitchen space to create nutritious meals um, in the community all across the UK. That's what Food Cycle does. We started in London, which was one project. Of course, it started off very small. I had no idea what I was doing. It was just an idea. And for me, I just asked a lot of people for help. I asked adults, I asked young people, I asked other organizations. Because me, when I started, I was 25. I didn't know anything. So for about five months, all I did was ask people, can you help me, can you help me, can you help me, can you help me? And then I would go back home and get all those ideas and create sheets and this, this is how it's going to happen and then two weeks later so no, 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 I can't have yeah. like that and then this and that and they are pro. That's how for me it's uh, not about innovation, getting new stuff. It's not about creating something new, it's just taking something from the old 
in different parts and making it better in your own way. So that's how I got started. Um, it took us six months to um, cook our first meal. So in the Guinness Book of Records, that could probably go down as the world's longest cooked meal. So six months to cook that one meal, um, which is actually a lie because on that day it only took seven hours. And what came out of that was um, we we're all so excited, all these people coming together to cook this amazing meal from food that would otherwise have been thrown away. Um, and it came out and we said, okay, this is gonna work, this is gonna work. And then, but of course, just by hoping it's gonna work, it doesn't actually work, we just get there. And then there's this huge pot and it's just this gray, salty thing of stew. And then like, oh crap. And then we eat it, it's like, uh, uh, Good thing the dessert looks good. And I know that was very disheartening. And uh, I actually bought, brought a camera to that day, but I did not take any pictures because I did not want to remember it. Um, but that was, that was the start, and fast forward to right now, where this is where we are, we're all across the country in the UK. Uh, young people, like the young people here, getting together in the communities with some of their parents and some of their friends and cooking meals for people who are hungry in local areas. And these are our social outputs. So you know, this is how much we serve. We've served that many meals, we've served, um, served that many volunteer hours, we have people cooking all across, and that's um, one of the ladies that comes to eats at our hub in Cambridge every week. But for us, you know, food cycle, it's more than just about a meal because, you know, just like that um, story about, you know, you can't teach a man how to fish and then you think, know, for us, it's more than just giving them a meal. It's about enjoying things. So for us, there's some great stories about learning and friendship. So for us, a couple stories that always stick in my mind is um, one, one lady uh, who we were friends with and we asked, it's like, okay, well, my daughter doesn't know how to cook. She wants to come and work for you guys, and okay. So, you know, she came volunteer a couple of weeks. Three weeks later, the mother comes back. She's like, what have you done with my daughter? What have you done with my daughter? She's like, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. It's like, she's cooking all the time. <laughs> and she cooked carrot soup for her grandmother yesterday. She was so happy. What did you do to her? And, you know, she found her joy through that. And, you know, those are the stories. And there's another story about Virginia who eats at her Cambridge hub. She's there, right there, over there in that corner eating. And she used to come starting off with her husband, but now she's passed away. And he's, she doesn't cook anymore because she lives alone and she can't be um, bothered. She's, she doesn't want to do it anymore. So she'll, she comes and meets new friends. And it's more than just about the meal. So, you know, that's the important thing about what we do. And we stick by very simple rules because we have 500 people all across the UK doing this. And there's no way, especially with young people, and you know this, parents and young people, that if you give young people rules, they're not going to follow them. So what we do is say we have three rules. Stick to the mission, so do what, do this, reduce food waste, um, feed poor people, um, and then don't break the law, because that's very important, but also be a leader. Don't follow them. So young people have so many ideas, and for us, we say, go try out your new ideas. And actually, our best ideas do not come from me. It comes from all the young people out there doing great, great things. And for us, it's, wow, well, that's a really good idea. And we tell everybody else and they copy it and things like that. So those are the golden rules of so food cycle. But of course, with nine minutes through, so I got like another six, seven minutes, um, you're asking, you know, you're, you're here, you've come over, you know, what am I doing here? What do I get out of this? What's in it for me? Some of you say, um, you know, I had nothing better to do for a Sunday, you know, Saturday, I'm here mm -hmm. just listening to this random guy talking. What, what's in it for me? And so, it's all about me. You know. what, can, what, what can I get out of it, right? So I ran, so I've been running Food Cycle for about three years now, and I think there's a couple things that I've ran the organization with that are my values. Of course, if somebody ran Food Cycle in a different way, and they do in the United States, they run it in a different way. Um, they will run it in a different way. But I've you know, followed a couple of rules that have been my values, and I just want to share some of those. And you can take those away, you can throw them away, you can go about one year or the other, but you know, I'm here talking to you and you have to listen. So, <laughs> so three things uh, that I'll try to, for you to take away. One is, um, for us at Food Cycle, it's all about giving. It's about giving, 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 and as one of my friends says, give with all your heart and um, just expect nothing back. And it's gonna pay off. You might not get it back tomorrow. You might get it back six months later. And that's how food cycle works, because people that hear about us, they say, oh, how do you hear about oh, this person, that person? And the 
word spreads. And for us, it's about, you know, if you're kind to other people, people will like you and talk about you. And that's, you know, the word of mouth about food cycle and what we do. Um, and it's very important. Um, but besides giving advice and things like that, as young people, you could say, you know, as a young person, what do I have to give? I'm 16, 15. Um, I don't have any skills that I can give. But there is something you can give because you have time. You can, you can give your time to people, volunteer, help other people out, and you'll learn new skills, make new friends, and also, you know, get out there. So I think give, give, give is one thing I would say. The other thing is um, talk to people. Of course, we all like talking, and I know Miguel over there loves talking. He'll talk a little bit later. <laughs> um, but talk to different people. Talk to different people in Asia. So, you know, I think we have a nice mix of adults and um, young people here. So talk to each other. Don't just, oh, he's an adult. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to my other young people over here. Talk to the other people because actually adults are not just people who do not understand what Facebook or Twitter is. <laughs> they actually have a lot of experiences. They, they actually know a lot of things and they have a lot of other friends. So for me, it was all about talking to other people and sharing ideas and through talking, you'll just learn so much. And you never know who that person might know that you really want to know that would change your career, change your life. And I think I have enough time to tell the story um, about, for me, I just talk to random people. And there's great stories sometimes. It's just a nice friend that you meet that you add on Facebook. And sometimes, they'll just make this whole big change for an organization. So for me, I'll tell you this one story, which was I was having coffee with my friend one day, just at a neighborhood cafe. He's a cyclist friend of mine. So no relation to what I do, having coffee, and, and his friend uh, Fiona comes up, oh, hey, hey, Stuart, how's it going? I don't know, blah, 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 I'm like, okay, well, you know, like, well, what do you do? It's like, oh, I do this thing called Food Cycle. And she's like, oh, that's very interesting. Why don't we get in touch with Jamie Oliver and ask him to support you? And I'm like, lady, it's like, I run this organization. You think I haven't heard about Jamie Oliver and tried? It's like, how do you suppose I do that? You know, because you know, sometimes like, oh yeah, you should do that. You should contact Barack Obama. He'll really support you. Like, and then she's like, I'm like, how do you do that? It's like, oh, well, my kids um, go to kid, you know, sit right beside her, um, his kids in school. They go to school together. Give me something, and I'll give it to the kids, and they'll take it home. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So that's what happened. I gave it something, and it's so hard to get in touch with Jamie Oliver because he's got TV shows in Australia, New Zealand, wherever. And I can track down his kids. That's what I did. I tracked down his kids. <laughs> <laughs> who is this group? You know, so I, I got a good quote from him. And that's my story about connect. You never know who's the person in here that knows somebody that can really change your life. So just, you know, you know, you just go talk. But don't talk with the intention of trying to get that magic link. Just talk and you'll be surprised at the kind of luck you'll run into. Just talk to a lot of people. And um, last thing. So good on time. Just like take a break. <laughs> the last thing is um, fall in love, which is the title of my presentation. You should fall in love with um, you know a person, your family, things like that. Of course, it's good to be in love like that. But what I'm talking about is um, if you can fall in love with what you do, what you work. If you think about it, we have 24 hours in the day. You sleep for maybe. Eight hours, we play for about eight hours, but we're probably these days going to be working about eight to ten hours in working. And if you kind of calculate that, you think that's pretty sad that you know if it's going to be that's a third of our life if we don't enjoy that. Then what's what's the point? You know, you just kind of say, I want to live my life. And if I hate my job, then that's thirty-three percent of my life that I hate. But I'm okay with it because I have the sleep and the friends, so, um, and I will only enjoy that. Part. So I love my job, I wake up every day. There are those days that I just, oh, I don't want to get up. But you know, we all have those days, I'm not gonna lie. But it's about falling in love. And um, with what you do, because when you like something, you'll do it, not just work, but you're just having fun. So I would say, you know, some, there's an old saying that says, um, you know, when you're on your deathbed with your family around you, nobody will ever say, oh, I wish I worked more in the office. You know, I wish I spent another day in the office because that was really fun. And I say, yeah, I want to spend a lot of time in the office. I want to work from 8 till 8 to 8 till 10 because actually for me, that's just having fun. Every day is just having fun. So I would say, 
you know, to end this all off, I would just say for you, um, especially for the young people as you grow up, make sure you're having fun, um, fall in love, and make, make a change in the world. So that's my um, details over there. There's a little email there, but you can just check us out um, online. And if you have any questions, um, you can always come ask me later. I'll be around. You have to speak in English, but you can also teach me a little bit of Portuguese. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.